Shadman is a name that you've probably have heard of recently due to the ongoing Chris Tyson situation, but if you were in the commentary community in 2016, because what's up, it's been a while since I uploaded. Originally, that was going to be the introduction to this video, but I decided to scrap that intro. Anyway, today, I'm going to be talking about Shadman, although Turkey Tom has already made a video on this subject before. So besides just talking about Chris's and other creators' ditty sex with Shadman, I'll also be addressing Shadman's own disgusting behavior again. Before we get into the video, credit to Turkey Tom as I use two of his talking points for the the first part of this video, and in the other half, I talk about Chris Tyson's ditty sex with Shadman and other creators that had ditty parties with Shadman. This is YouTube's most depraved artist. <laughs> To start this video off, let's talk about Shadman's beginnings. According to Sleepycast episode 27, he was originally from Switzerland, where he attended an art university. But he was then later expelled after the staff at his uni found out about his underage lolly porn artwork, which led the staff to report him to the Swiss police. According to the podcast, he was permanently suspended from the school and was deemed a menace to society. But one of them was in the Justice Department. <laughs> oh my no. god. And then god. They broke the bomb and said, We found some stuff on your website, which is highly illegal. And we cannot allow you back on the on the campus. Oh wow! Well. Because you are a menace <laughs> to society. <laughs> you really? you said that exactly. Yes. You're a menace yes. to society. They made me sign a thing accepting that, that I you, am. That you're a menace. You yes. Sign it to make you a menace. You are officially a menace yeah, to you society. Are legally, you are a menace. Even though he was kicked out of school, this didn't stop him from pursuing his art career. Shaman began doing freelance artwork before making his first break in the online world by making a Newgrounds account in 2009. This would become Ground Zero, where his online infamy began to take shape. In 2011, he drew artwork of his own mother. Within the following year, the famous animator Ed Gould, creator of the popular webcomic animated series, Ed's World, would unfortunately pass away from cancer. While many normal people would mourn his death, Shadman had different plans in mind. He had made artwork depicting Ed being brutal by the Grim Reaper. This should have been enough for people to be outraged and have Shadman ouster from the community, but somehow Shadman was able to escape the isolation. The host of Sleepycast was the reason that painted the initial sympathetic portrait of Shadman. The former hosts of Sleepycast were eager to defend his behavior and stances, stating that his offensive artwork was not worthy of being blackballed out of the community, and that they were attacking Source of Amendment rights, and they would mock and make fun of anyone who was outraged by his disgraced artwork constantly on the podcast. <laughs> you know, it was like... <laughs> they they call me like this that that like I'm I'm like a, a, a threat street rat but but <laughs> street they're rat like, they're like telling me that to prove that they're nothing but an agents of treachery themselves right by like denying my rights to express myself in my own free time yeah completely independent disconnected from what you from what you, I do in school it's not like what else also it, look if, if look if they if they found like a fucking like severed head in your bag or something yeah like that, that would but, be different but but but. I mean, you, when people, when they see things specifically, and I, I think this is a small tangent, but I like to go on it. Uh, when people see maybe something like your look, they would think this guy is going to be a psycho or whatever. And it's, it's. I mean, you get that a lot, right? People yes. think, oh God, I was terrified to meet I you. I thought you were going to be a I fat thought, idiot. Even, <laughs> Chad, I, I met you in 2010 and I, I talked All to you right. and I was like, this guy's really nice. But even before I met you in 2000. Well, you see, 13 or 14, I see, I knew. I knew, because... This seems to be the main source where people would learn about Shadman. Shad was a guest on the podcast, befriended some of the viewer's favorite creators, and eventually became part of the friend group too. While at the same time, these creators who befriended Shad turned a blind eye to his unrated pornographic artwork. Popular animators at the time, like Sir Palo, paid tribute to him. And for a while, the host of Sleepycast treated him like that one uncle who told you things just to scare you. But Shadman was far from that. He was more like a different kind of uncle, who would always get caught lacking at an elementary school playground. What they didn't ask Shadman and this episode was, why was he seeking refuge from the Swiss police? On a post from October 5th, 2010, Shaman responds to a question on why exactly his artwork got him in trouble, saying Switzerland has some law against un persons involved in activity in art. For those unaware, what he was stating here is that his artwork depicted centralized wrongs of un girls, also known as lolly. Although some individuals online defend its right to exist, most people express disgust and ostracize anyone out of the community who supports or creates this type of disgraced art. But in the eyes of Shadman, his friends and fans, it was easy to defend because it was a disconnect from reality while ignoring the fact it was enabling files.
In 2016, the U.S. was going through another presidential election, one of the most intense elections the country has had. Months prior to the U.S. election, Shaolin was largely in the spotlight. This may lead to the recent popularity of his Overwatch art, and related political webcomic cartoons such as Hill Lolly Clinton. On November 8, 2016, an anonymous user commented on Chapman's post, asking if he could draw Keemster's daughter having sex with Donald Trump. At the time, Keem's daughter was only seven years old. Shaman took a screenshot about the request and said on Twitter that he would do so if Trump won. Thus, three days later, when Trump won the election, Shaman decided to publish art of Keem's daughter giving to Donald Trump, and once again, he was only seven years old. Keemstar took to Twitter to express his disgust and anger at this apparent art, and rightfully so. One of Keemstar's friends on this Colossus Crazy, or better known as Clown, called out Shad on Twitter. He would later then go on Chatman's stream to confront him on the art he drew. Hello? Can you okay? Hello, Colossal. Yes, I can. Uh, uh, no problem being on the stream. Uh, yeah, apologies if I slur my words a bit. I just kind of got up a few hours ago. No problem. All this shit. Let me just be very clear. I was not calling you a pedophile. I was not calling you sexually attracted to children. What I did was say what you did by make, drawing this picture, putting it in context on your website with a bunch of other pictures of little naked girls, was fucked. Especially considering it's Keemstar's daughter. He doesn't deserve that. Why target his daughter like that? And I felt that was fucked. But I'm not calling you a pedophile. Do you uh understand? Totally understand. Do you understand that it was obviously part of like the, the, the controversial nature of the picture to post it under such yes, context? It started off as a controversial joke. Yes. It, you didn't go. You didn't go through with it. I wouldn't. I, I would have never. I would have you never. Did draw a picture of Kim Star's daughter in a kind of like, obviously she's not naked, but I do feel like there are sexual connotations regarding that picture. Would you agree? Totally agree. That, yes, totally agree. Uh, Colossal, I, I respect you uh, like a hell of a lot. And just like man to man, if you if you think it would be better for me to take it down, I would take it down just out of respect Dude, to you. If you could do that, I think that would be wonderful. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go do that right fucking now. I'm gonna take it down out of respect to You're fucking okay, Colossal. I, I appreciate you doing that. I'm gonna go do it. And obviously, it's gonna be fucking all the over. It's already out there, yeah. so I understand. Yeah. But I, w I would definitely appreciate you doing that. Shad makes a few concessions in the video, such as deleting the images and promising not to do it again. There you go, guys. Fucking, you can't, you can't resist the charm of Colossal. He wants you to take it down. I don't. I never fucking take shit down, but for him, for you know, I, I just learned my lesson here. Guys, I'm gonna put this up. I'm gonna put this up today, and we're gonna forget about the whole thing, okay? We're gonna forget about the whole thing. I'm gonna go back to fucking drawing Overwatch characters and fucking people who aren't aren't real. I will still draw some things based on real people, but not on real people's innocent children. I'm done with that. Like that was that was a little that was a weird thing, and just forget about that. But after this conversation, he makes none of these concessions and instead decides to leave the image up on his website and continue drawing art of real children. Because three days later, he would repeat the same behavior. Lieutenant Corvus was an up and coming commentator while just being 11 years old. What helped her become very popular in the commentary scene was due to the shout out she received from Iris Cynical. This caught Shaman's attention. On November 18th, 2016, Shad drew of Lieutenant Corvus post sex with some very inappropriate captions. And once again, she was only 11 years old. In later years, he began drawing art of child actors. For example, drawings of Emma Watson when she was only 10 years old and drawings of Millie Bobby Brown when she was only 12. The final nail in Shatman's coffin that led to his legal troubles was when he drew Sorry, of Daphne Keene after her role as X-23 in the film Logan. And mind you, she was only 12. In early 2017, leaked Discord messages showed Shatman sending sat photos of Daphne Keene with very disgusting captions, calling her a real-life other vile messages from Shadman were leaked. Three days later, Shadman posted an illustration on his website of Daphne Keen, who appeared to have been badly beaten, molested, and covered in And once again, she was only 12 years old. This caught the eye of Noel, owner of the Kiwi Farms website. But he drew Lieutenant Corbus. He drew pictures of, um, I can't show any of these pictures because they're all pornographic. He drew pictures of Daphne Keen from Logan being raped by her co-star, Hugh Jackman. And not just raped, like pissed on and shit on and brutalized and fucking like mauled like a bear by Hugh Jackman as a, uh, as uh, the Wolverine. Disgusted by Shad's behavior, Noel reported him to the actress's talent agency. And once someone started saying that I was a Karen because I had reported Shadman to the talent agency of Daphne Keene for drawing her being raped by Hugh Jackman, 
I was like, okay. Following this report, Shaman received a cease and desist email from Daphne Keene's lawyers and posted a screenshot of the email on Twitter in which he defended his apparent action. The email read, Dear website operator and host provider, We are a legalization council for actress Daphne Keene, a 12-year-old minor. We have become aware that the website shadbase.com has created and posted fic art anime cartoon images expressly depicting our client and engaging in exclusive acts. This cease and desist letter resulted in immediate and permanent shutdown of Shad's site and would make Shad men go offline for a few weeks. Further evidence is that he drew pornographic drawings of Levi Shiver's son when he was just 9 years old. In this Discord message, Shad can be seen talking about him inappropriately. Still, people like Ava Chris Tyson from Mr. Beast remained friends with him despite all the evidence that Shadman drew lolly of real children and would obsess over child actors before drawing porn of them. Ava Chris Tyson was originally part of Mr. Beast's crew. At first, she was getting hated on mostly due to her transition. It wasn't until July 2024 that she was exposed for being friends with Shadman. On April 26, 2019, Chris posted a tweet saying, Shout out to Shadman for having safe to work drawings today. I accidentally pulled up his website on stream. Now, you're probably saying AJ, this is probably coincidence, or he probs pulled it up on accident. Well, if you're not convinced yet, on November 18th, 2017, Chris replied to Mr. Beast on Twitter stating, This is coming from the same guy who owns a Shad based drawing and has it as a centerpiece in his living room. Later on, Chris posted a photo of one of the Shadman's lot porn art that he had mentioned earlier owning, stating, bonus fidget spinners to really throw some ex in one of Mr. Beast's videos at the 9 minute and 30 second timestamp, you can see the same photo hanging in the living room. Any normal human being would know that having s drawings of children isn't normal. And adding on to that, Mr. Beast and Chris were roommates at the time. Also, if this isn't enough proof that Ava was most definitely friends or associated with Shadman, on April 16th, 2018, Chris said on Twitter replying to Shadman stating, No Beast Boy Trap, Shad you've changed. What Chris was referring to here was that he was asking Shaman to draw art to Beast Boy. Keep in mind, the Beast Boy was shown at different ages throughout the shows, but regardless, the tweet is very fucking strange. A user posted on Twitter stating, Remember this when growing up? Me too. While tagging Shaman on the tweet, Chris replied to the tweet saying, Help, I need an adult. I don't need to further explain to what he was referring to here. On April 14th, 2017, a user on Twitter posted a photo of Mabel and Dipper kissing. Chris replied to this tweet by saying, They are twins, so at this point it's just creation, right? And by the way, the ages of Mabel and Dipper were 12 and 13 years old. And look, if you're not convinced enough that Shadman and Chris were having sex together, well, the next tweet should be more convincing. On January 2019, Shadman posted a photo of Rafiria from the show named Rising of the Shield Hero, saying, what is this and why do people keep sending me this? Keep in mind, there are two versions of this character. In one, she's 17, and in the other, she's 10. And guess what photo Shadman posted of the character? I will let you all play at home. A, the one where she was 17, B, the one where she was 10, or C, Chris Tyson invited Gooby to the Diddy party. Well, if you guessed correctly, it was fucking B. Anyways, Chris replied to this tweet stating, Please, Shad, please! And what makes this even the worst is that a user on Twitter replied to Chris with a photo of Lolly. Two versions of the image, one with the girl cloth and the other without the clothes. Fun fact, Chris Tyson liked the photo. And regardless of the fact, even if it had clothes or not, it's still fucking disgusting. Anyways, after his disgusting history was exposed, Chris would make a response to the controversies and his response to the allegations was complete shit. He also states in the same response he'd be leaving the Mr. Beast crew. In the midst of all of this, other creators were also exposed for being at Shadman Diddy party. So the Shadman flight logs, or as I like to call it, Shadman's Diddy party. The people included in this are as follows: Sir Palo, Elvis the Alien, Nux Tuck, and Ricky Berwick. And yes, there are way other people in the Twitter thread, but it will take a while to get through it. Anyway, since I really didn't like Elvis the Alien before he got exposed, I'm gonna talk about him first. Critical Shogun made a meme about Elvis the Alien, right? And what was Elvis' reaction to this? As expected, he responded angrily to this tweet. Wow, very cool. This is my local front and center. Love getting speared out like out of nowhere! I've never commissioned Chad, I only ever use his existing artwork, none of which depicted underage people, for my people ruined everything thumbnails! The worst thing I did involving was ignorantly and wrongly defending the takedown of his website before I knew the extent of his degeneracy! Well, these screenshots say otherwise, Elvis. And I mean, you could make an argument for this screenshot and say that he was calling out Shadman. Yeah, but why the fuck you Shad's art? It's fucking retarded. Anyways, Elvis did make a video on his second channel apologizing for what he did. ...which is they were extremely irresponsible videos. Um, some of them weren't age-restricted, and I talked about some pretty disgusting stuff. I know I censored mostly everything. I did a pretty good job centering stuff. Every once in a while, something might slip through, but yeah, just the um, 
Thankfully, Elvis apologized for what he did, right? And he can move on from this. Yeah, I thought that too. But then he made a video ranting about Keemstar. Why am I still getting hate? <laughs> okay, so this video is for the people from Twitter. If you aren't from Twitter, then this video might confuse you. I wrote some things down in a document, so um, if I'm reading, that's why. I just did that to make the video more concise. I tend to pause a lot when I'm just talking off the cuff, so yeah. Um, so yes, I deleted Twitter. I did it because, frankly, I hate it. Um, the, dog the dog piling was just a good reason for me to finally get rid of it. Um, not only was it a tool of procrastination for me, but it was also a mild addiction. So I'm happy to be rid of it. Um, Twitter is a place where you will get dogpiled on by hundreds of people for a shitty tweet you made seven years ago. It's happened to me, it's happened to many other people. Yes, the total deflection in this video is fucking crazy. Also, you deserve to get piled, you dumb f Anywho, Nuxtug was also on this list, but people have had mixed opinions about him. I personally think since I don't like his sh YouTuber OC, I think he's guilty like ungod bro, like for real for real, on big chungus. To be fair to him though, he's mostly had negative interaction with Shadman. Despite that though, he asked Shadman for a collab and used one of Shad's drawings for a thumbnail before. Again, to be fair to him, he didn't know it was drawn by Shadman. However, if you want to believe him or not, that's up to you. Also, he has apologized for using Shad's art. The last thing about him though is Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers made it seem Nuxtuck was getting kicked off from the podcast. The podcast was done, yeah. Podcast Podcast is done now. Wait, what? Yeah, the podcast is over. We uh, are not filming the last episode. It's over. Is that ser Are you serious? Yeah, we're not doing the podcast anymore. It's done. Why? We're supposed to film on Tuesday. Well, there's a couple reasons for it. A lot of that was obviously some of the shad stuff too, because we were kind of sitting there. We're like, um, me and Caleb, we and we were just like, this is, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, the other thing was we just want to redo things maybe like two months down the road or something uh, between each other and that's kind of where we're at. In reality though, that wasn't the case. The reason for the podcast ending was due to reasons from behind the scenes. Next person is Ricky Berwick. You know we got the usual positive interaction with Shadman so he can be invited to Shad's day party. But as usual, he responded after getting a lot of backlash saying that everyone was a fan of Shad based from 2016-2019 and to show he's no longer a fan of Shad and the day parties that he had with him, he deleted all of his tweets interacting with Shadman. He even reached out to Keem and personally apologized to him. Anyway, the last person is Sir Palo who was the biggest fan of Shadman and he definitely went to Shad's day party afterwards. He even made an animation of Shadman and paying tributes to him. And these screenshots don't help his case either. In one of these screenshots, you got him saying really vile stuff, stating, pedophiles are people that love children. People that draw children are artists. Now that's a really wild thing to say there, ain't it? Anyways, yeah, no, people like Shaban who children, either that being fictional or non-fictional, are also fucking files you read. You definitely went to several Shaban's ditty parties. It definitely went crazy with all of that 1,000 bottles of baby oil. And yeah, usually I will just end off the video like in conclusion, like yeah, dude, I've I've been working on this video for over like a month or two, nearly about a bit in two months. And the reason for that delay, I've been busy with other stuff, and I also wanted to work more on the video instead of just you know getting it out under two weeks. Um, but yeah, no, expect for me to you know uh, upload more videos more frequently. Hopefully, hopefully I do end up doing that, dude. I've missed out a lot on stuff that's been going on in small commentary. Um. Especially with like Parlo, well Parlo's in small commentary, but Parlo literally suicide baited on a fucking stream because his channel was dying. And yeah, I will be making a whole Parlo video, another whole Parlo video again. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much for the video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe and like, and yeah. Hit me! Girls look better in a real tight sweater. 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 Girls look better. Girls look better in a real tight sweater. 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 Girls look better in a real tight sweater.